Hey folks, Jamie here with Journey North. Picked up a handle for that Michigan head that we had the other day. Found a real nice one. I'm real happy with it. But uh just want to talk about this little tool right here. A little four in hand. File rasp. If you don't have one of these, pick one up. They're only like, I don't know, 10, 12 bucks probably at your local hardware store. This is a Nicholson. Nicholson preferred. There's a few other brands that are good, but Nicholson always treats me right on these kind of files here. This here takes off quite a bit of material. You can see the profile's got a little bit of a roundness to it. This here's got the same pattern, but on a flat side. Then you got the finer one too, just opposite. Put you down here. Hopefully you can see what we're doing. I got this right about where I want it. You guys see me do this a few times. There's a lot of guys that do it. It's not uh, not real interesting to watch, in my opinion. So I'm sparing you the the time of it. But uh, right here we need a little more often. There's the draw knife, spoke shave, got the grinder with the flat disc, um, sander. You can get in there with the sander, hand sand, whatever you want. But this here will take off quite a bit of material in a hurry, right exactly where you need it. Then the, I don't know, you probably can't can't see that, but it's roughed up right there. Looks like you took about 40 grit to it. So uh, flip it around, use one of them finer sides. That'll smooth it right up. Flip it around. Do the same thing. Smooth side. Getting close to the final fit here, so. Show you this handle here. It's a thin one. I like these thin ones. Good grain orientation. Almost straight up and down. Thin. We gotta smooth her out yet. Yeah, I got a few beat up marks in it from putting it in my vise. I gotta get some leather pads on that vise instead of using just the old glove. Kind of, kind of chews it up here and there. But that's kind of look I go for as well. So that's no big deal. But uh, we're gonna. We're going to thin this. I already can get my hand all the way around it like that. But I want it just a hair thinner yet. But, uh. Oh, yeah. Put the mini sledge to it and see what we get here. I usually go by that a little bit of sound difference there to see when it's where I want it. We are just about touching all the way around, which is what I like. Got a little bit of a gap right here yet. And this here makes a sharp corner. We're not going to get all that one. But this one here we can. So I'm going to take this off, do a little bit of draw knife and rasp work, and I'll be right back. All right, we got everything fitted about where we want. Um, we lowered the head. Let me get you down here, so here. 
You can see right there, I got a little ledge here where it's going to be our final fit. What I'll do is I'll take the forehand rasp. We'll just knock that little lip off of there. And hit it with the sandpaper before I put it on. What that'll do is instead of having just a hard ledge that sits on it, it'll be tapered. So when we put the wedge in, it kind of wedges down on itself as well. And we got to come down quite a bit yet. But now our, uh, our kerf is too short. There's a lot of different saws you can use. Hacksaw, I see, I use the most because I got a little more control. Good stiff blade. Bi, this is a bimetal. A little bit bigger teeth. I just go real slow with it. Find your groove. You gotta watch this backside here because you're you're cutting right on right on a corner. It's easy to turn your saw a little bit either way. Then you'll get that kerf that cuts out the side. Even when you're buying handles, you'll see that they, they have that. You don't want that. You want to keep everything nice and smooth right where it goes. Go slow. There's, there's pressure in there because it's a kerf. All right, I gotta I gotta take a little bit off this this side here with the forward hand. Our kerf's deep enough, so we'll get that wedge ready to put in, and I'll be back. Got that wedge put in there and cut off. You can see exactly how the wedge works. See how it's a little skinnier there than it is there and there. So we were a little bit tight here, and a little more gap here. That's exactly how a wedge is supposed to work. You see these guys on other shows and. TV and stuff like that always want hardwood, hardwood. Hard's always better. It is for certain things. But on a wedge like this, you want it to compress and push out where it needs to. That's what holds everything together. A lot of, a lot of pressure on that. That's not coming off. But let's get back to this four in hand. What I use these for. You can leave this this square and sharp looking. I, I don't care for that. You know me. I make it my own. So I'm going to choose the the flat fine side on here. And then I'm just going to get in there and knock these corners off a little bit. All the way around. Chamfer the edges. You can do a sandpaper too. Just it's a little harder to get in there with it. If you got a lot to take off, you can get in there with that with the bigger, the sharper sides. Just be careful so you don't rip too big a chunk off. You get get what you wanted. Take your sander. Spit on there, see if we can bring out some of the green.
Nice. Now you don't have to, but it's up to up to you if you want to put one of these wedges in. This here's a barrel wedge. It's gonna we put this in, it's gonna crack this all the way around the edge and just splay it way out. More than it already is even. Got these smaller ones, we can just put one of them in there. That's gonna take up a little bit of room, but not a lot. Got this one here, it's gonna take up even more room. Or you can do any combination of, of them. One barrel wedge, one step wedge. Or you can leave it. If it starts to get loose later down the road, throw in a couple wedges or a barrel wedge. It's up to you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it for now. I'm not putting anything in there right now. I'm gonna sand this handle down just to hear more yet, a little contour it a little bit. See what it looks like. Be back. Doesn't that look much nicer than that old handle now? I mean, I wish we could have saved that old handle we had, but this has got some nice character to this handle. I just did a real light burn just to bring out the grain. I put a little mixture of oil and that uh, same stain that we put on the pickaxe back here, right there, but not quite as dark. I didn't burn as dark either. Just the, the green in this one was just beautiful. Almost straight up and down. Got good fit all the way around. I'm very happy with it. Let me get a measurement. And I buy 36 inch handles for these. Mostly because that's what the hardware store has. I'm, I'm going to order some 32s eventually. But I, I cut these down. I dropped the head as far as I can go on them. So to the top of the head here, we're 34 and a half inch on this. Which for a three and a half pound head, I mean, we're balanced. Yeah. Right in there somewhere. Not bad. Come on. Get out, drop a Christmas tree with it this week. Not to bring it in my house. I'll drop a, see if I can drop a nice spruce. Let it dry for firewood for next year. Get the file out, put a little sharp edge on that. I think it turned out nice. Another one for my collection. Bought out of heads up here. I got uh, got that little hatchet we're gonna work on. I got this other pickaxe here. No, uh, I think uh, January should be getting a little care package of some heads sent up. I'm guessing from Wisconsin. One of my brothers gonna pick out some for me there. But uh, that's our little project for today. I took that down. And that's. It's not going to be a handle for somebody that doesn't know what they're doing, because I, I like my handles thin, thin and light. But uh, if you don't got one of these, pick one up just to mess with. Four in hand, little rasps. They come in handy for all sorts of things. Wish it wasn't dark, I'd go try this sucker out right now. Woohoo! <laughs> all right, guys. Stay warm, take her easy.